What are you waiting for? I think we've all heard this question or asked it at one time or another. And usually, whoever asked it is a little bit or a lot irritated. Someone wants to see some action he or she thinks is beneficial. A call to patience may be seen as maintaining the status quo, risk aversion, fear, or just plain old lack of imagination. Right now, we're living daily with this question as individuals, as communities, and as a nation. It's a good question for us, for Christians ought to always be asking ourselves and each other this question. What are you? What am I? What are we waiting for? So far in this sermon series, we've thought together about love, joy, and peace, those very attractive fruit of the Spirit. People tend to love hearing about them, and I think just about everyone would like an extra helping of them. But when it comes to the fruit of this particular day, patience, I'm pretty sure that it falls into the specialty fruit category, along with quince or guava or maybe fig. Sure, they're fruit, but they're not necessarily the one I would reach for first in a fruit bowl. I'd rather have another serving of love, joy, or peace. And yet here it is, patience. Fruit number four on the official list of the fruit of the spirit. There is no optional list. Oh, great. I guess we're going to have to deal with it. So if patience is, according to the Cambridge English Dictionary, the ability to wait or continue doing something despite difficulties or to suffer without complaining or becoming annoyed, why wait? Certainly the world in which we live is asking this question about going back to life without limits vis-a-vis -vis the coronavirus. Why wait? Some people will get sick. Some will die. But people die every day from something. Death happens. We can't put life on hold forever. The truth is that for a long time, certainly way before this virus came calling, our American culture has been increasingly oriented toward why wait? We want instant responses to our texts, emails, and calls. We want immediate test results, quick recovery from illness, injury, and surgery. We want fast food, drive through pharmacies, drop off children, rapid weight loss, swift justice, nimble organizations, high speed rail, express mail, accelerated learning. We are a people obsessed with immediacy. We carry this expectation into our relationships too. We fall in love, hook up, unhook, move on with unprecedented swiftness. We want others to get it, get us, before they even know if we have a middle name, much less what it is. What are you waiting for? Is all around us. It's in advertisements which all in one way or another imply that if we were a bright, with it human being, we wouldn't wait. We would jump at the chance to avail ourselves of the service, the item, the experience, the person on offer. We've already heard from the dictionary that patience me means waiting. What then does the Bible have to say about patience? The waiting we find in scripture is not passive. Waiting does not mean inertia. Waiting that is biblical means trusting that God is at work, that God is the guarantor of his promises, as we do whatever we can to cooperate in the process. Patience, waiting in the Bible, means trusting God. One biblical picture of patience puts us in the same role as that of a farmer. We are garden support staff. We water, we weed, we prune, we drive stakes in the ground and tie strings around plants to support weak stalks. We enrich the soil. We do what we can. 
But God is the one who makes things grow and produce food for us to harvest and things for us to enjoy. Paul, in his first letter to the Thessalonian Christians, describes one way such gardening of people might occur. He says, admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with them all. The patient gardener, the patient Christian, takes the long view. Where the plants, really the people, begin is not where they end up. And sometimes the wait is long. The investment is enormous. And the process is messy. So much weeding, so labor intensive. And we can be tempted to give up, to give in, to throw in the rake and the clippers and walk away. Paul knew this. He remembered the time he had thought of himself as a rising star on God's A-team of rightness. He couldn't see that he was actually a mess, spiritually speaking. We heard this in the scripture Brent read, where Paul, writing to young Pastor Timothy, tells him that God was patiently merciful to him when he was a mess. God poured out on him the kindness, grace, faith and love of the Lord Jesus that grew Paul, strengthened him, and produced in him the fruit of grace, faith, love, and patience that would, through Paul, in turn, bless others. That kind of long-haul patience Paul learned and exhibited is impossible apart from the prior promise and persistent patience of God who alone is absolutely trustworthy and never gives up, never runs out on even the messiest of us. So the question for us is, what are you and I waiting for today? What are we watering, weeding, pruning, supporting in the garden of our own life, our life with God, with ourself, with family, with friends, with coworkers, with the boss, with neighbors, with the church, with the community. The fact is that we mere mortals wait with great difficulty, if we wait at all, for God, for each other, for ourselves, and yet, Scripture is full of examples of patience and exhortations to patience. Not surprisingly, the examples of patience mostly refer to God, and the exhortations to patience mostly point to us. This indicates that true patience can only come from the Lord. We do not manufacture it ourselves. It is the work of God in us. Patience results from faith in someone who is good for their word, someone who keeps their promises without fail. Patience results from trust in God, who is good, in God, who is love, in God, who waits for us to realize and receive this good news, and who then faithfully, compassionately tends to us as if we were prized plants in his garden. God waters, weeds, prunes, supports us by his spirit through scripture, prayer, and interaction with others so that we, in a humorous twist of divine design, not only produce the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We become part of how God cultivates this fruit in others, always with patience. Not, what are you waiting for, gritting our teeth, patience, but that patience the Lord has shown and continues to show us. Patience inextricably entwined with the other fruit of God's spirit and displayed at the cross, where our patient God, who is love, 
allowed his innocent son to die for the guilty and continues to patiently await our turning to him and to life we can only imagine that awaits us. What are you waiting for? Find it in the Lord and in him find your life. Amen.